Hey everyone, John Henry here, Slingshot Futures Trading Group, SSFTG. Welcome to this video, and in this one we're going to be going over uh, something that I talk about a lot, and it's something that I've done a couple videos on, but it's been a little while, and it could use a little bit of updating and, and just kind of a refresher, and that's going to be going over candle gaps. What are candle gaps? How do they form? Where do they come from? Where do they go? Right? That's kind of the idea here, is just kind of going back over candle gaps in in a deeper understanding. Now, first of all, if you're not familiar with what a candle gap is, we have to have a three bar sequence that creates it. So if we look at a, let's look at these three candles right here. If I were to look at these three candles and highlight the up and bottom, the top and bottom of the first candle of the sequence, ignore the middle, and then go to the third and do the same. What I'm looking at is from the top of this candle to the bottom of this candle, is there a gap? Is there a space here? Disregard the middle candle, just those two. Is there a gap? Yes, there is. So when we have that situation, we effectively have found a candle gap. Now, what is that telling us, right? Who cares? What, what about a candle gap? Okay, awesome. A candle gap is effectively telling us that we have a nice little consolidation, a breakout, and a potential continuation phase that is taking place looking for upside objectives to finish. That's really all it's telling us. And it's gapping away because of its aggression level. So how can we use this, right? Why is this useful? If we look at the overall candle gap and I were to draw a box from the top of the first candle to the bottom of the third candle, that highlights that gap distance, right? This makes it a bit more visually obvious in terms of what I'm talking about. Now, if we were to take a measurement from the bottom of the first candle of the sequence to the bottom of the third candle of the sequence, right? The closest part that created that gap. And I take that measurement and I go up by one, right? A one-to-one -one move. That is my upside target. That is a candle gap objective. And when you hit candle gap objectives, you don't typically mess around with them anymore when they're stopping dead in their tracks. But you'll notice, if you were looking really, really close, wait a minute, John, what about this? Well, what's this about, right? This, the, how is this still the gap if this happened? This does happen sometimes before they've reached out and made a major objective. You can extend the gap over because technically... Even if I were to draw a box all the way over here to all the way over here, there is still a gap, right? So we still have an effective open candle gap, although the measurement is going to be a little bit narrower. So we'll go in, look at a slightly narrower projection, and forecast that one out. This gives us a really nice range that the market's going to want to look for. You've got the initial candle gap objective, and then you have the modified that's taken place. And this gives us a nice little zone that the market found uh, quite a bit of resistance out of later on. Now, as the market's continuing, there will be situations where it keeps getting candle gaps, right? And in fact, if you look really close, if we were to draw a box around here and a box around here, technically speaking, there is some shallow little candle gapping. And even if we go all the way over, that candle gap actually did stay open. As crazy as that is, that's still technically open, although it's looking for very small targets. So what would we do with this one? Same mentality. Let me get rid of the other ones. We've got a gap from here to here. So I'm looking for upside objectives that fit the bill for that kind of move. And that would put an upside objective initially right here. Right, and again, you, you, when you hit these areas, you don't really want to mess around with them. But here again, it did come in and modify a little bit. So if we're looking at this, our modified zone, although it's very shallow, still gives us a candle gap objective that we can measure up to that tells us that our targets should be a one-to-one -one move. And if you're not sure what I'm doing, my Fibonacci tool, this green line here is the one-to-one -one move. It's 100%. Uh, so just so you know what I'm drawing there, uh, this gives us our zone of interest. That's the upside target for the, for the buyers. Even though it really closed it in, it still stayed open enough to create an upside objective. And when the market started breaking away, do you see the next one? Guess what they did? If I draw a box around here and I draw a box around here, we've got ourselves another gap. Once again, they 
went around a little bit, but if we take this gap measurement from here to here, and we look at upside objectives based off of that as well, that would tell right over here how viciously aggressive of a trap that was, where the market's trying to reach up, they make it almost to the target, and then what happened? The whole reason for the trade, the gap, is now gone. We've actually gone to a negative gap. It's backfilled itself. That takes away the reason for the long, and traders have now basically given up. So the next time the market returns back up to the highs, it's no wonder that it absolutely collapsed, because they probably weren't even expecting that. Now, notice when we flip gears and go the opposite direction, what happened? We have a candle gap here. We have a no candle gapping inside here, right? So if I were to draw a box around this candle and a box around this candle, we do have a gap. But if I were to draw a box around this candle and this candle, we do not have a gap. See how that's a negative gap? So we have to go further forward. Where's the next one? Well, we've got this one and this one. And that is a big old gap right inside the middle there. So as far as downside objectives go, we have another one that just lined itself up. And that tells us that when the market reaches down to, and unfortunately it did it in the aftermarket, but when it reaches down to this 14,615, that's going to be a major zone of interest. Uh, it's just, you know, again, they did it in the overnight session. So regardless of the direction that you're looking at, whether it's a 15 minute chart, a five minute chart, a one minute chart, a tick chart, a volume chart, it doesn't matter. Uh, as long as it's not a chart that's based on distance, like range or Renko, those aren't going to work with this, um, because there's always going to be a gap. But as long as it's outside of that and it's in the realm of what I would consider normal candles, these gaps can give you some really just huge areas to not only look for profit taking, but to tell you when it's still okay to continue in a direction. If you have an open gap, then you know the market's still got juice in the tank. It's still got room to go. And that can be a big confidence booster if that's the one thing that you were lacking in that trade. Either way, that's going to be going over candle gaps, why they happen, and, and why they're just so crazy useful. If you have any questions about them, drop them in the comments below, or, of course, you can always shoot me an email, jhb at ssftg.com. Until the next one, enjoy, rest up, and we'll talk to you all then. Thanks.